So the first question is, there's been eight years since the last time you came around here and what are your expectations so far for this time? Well, we expect it to be just as great as last time, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, and last time it was the first ever time we went to Brazil, so we didn't really know what to expect. And it was a much bigger venue, uh, so today it's a smaller venue, but uh, yeah, it should be really, really cool. Um, when you started this whole musician thing, and what happened in your life that made a difference to make you choose this and not being like any, in any other professionals? Well, I think it's just uh, you go along as things happens, you know. Um, I guess in a way you, you you choose subconsciously when you're when you're a young kid and you're in front of the mirror and you, you pretend to play the guitar or sing or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so it's just um, this is the only thing we know really to do. Yeah. <laughs> so. Life just leads you to this. Yes, naturally. Do you have any song or album that you're especially proud of making from all times? <coughs> of course, uh, the last, the most recent album is of course something that I'm really proud of. And I mean, I'm proud of all the albums we've done, but uh, you tend to keep the most recent album as, as your favorite, you know, otherwise why would you release the album if you don't really think it's better than before? So, yeah. To get better in the next world. What? To get always better in the next world. Yeah, I mean, you always strive for perfection and that's something that you cannot really attain, you know, but you can, uh, you can come as close as possible. Mm -hmm. That's what you try to do with, with every new album and every new song. <laughs> And um, how was it for you to play with a band and with the live orchestra and everything in a TV, like big TV channel in Norway? Well, of course, uh, it was a kind of like a dream come true for uh, for the band. We've been always wanting to play like a full production with a with a huge orchestra and choir, mm -hmm. and uh, and finally we got the chance to do it, and at the same time put on a really big production in a big place, you know, so it was, yeah, uh, an awesome feeling to, to go on stage and, and know that everything works properly, you know, and, and the band and the orchestra are in sync really well. And, I mean, we had some pre-production days too, so it, uh, but it went really, really well. And uh, so we're going to do the same now in uh, the Wacken Open Air Festival in, in Germany. So. But that's going to be with a different orchestra and uh, it's a different setting because it's a festival and we don't have to, well, we don't get to have a sound check. And, uh, so it's going to be a bit more tricky, but I'm sure we'll, we'll pull it off. Mm -hmm. And do you think, like, from since you started and with the years until now, do you think there's less uh, people are, have been more open to certain kinds of extreme? Music? I think so, yeah. Um, and I also feel that. Timu as a band has been able to, you know, open the doors for, for other uh, bands as well. Um, uh, if you look at the evolution of, of metal music in general, it's it's just uh, more and more people are into it now. And mm -hmm. Metal has always been big, you know, ever since the 70s and the 80s. So it's uh, it's great to see that an authentic kind of. of Musical art is still something that uh, is very attractive for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And um, the term Abrahadabra, that is from Alistair Crowley and named also the, the last demo album, mm -hmm. was it uh, on purpose this reference to his stuff or is it just something that. Fit? Well, we've always been very interested in Crowley and, uh, and his works, um, but when we we're looking for the album title, we could not really come up with something that, that we felt was representing the album. So, uh, and, and so we had the song named Abra Adabra at first. Uh -huh. So we just changed the song title and then used that word as the album title instead. And uh, we felt that's really representative for not only the, the lyrics but also the music of the album. Uh -huh. 
and still talking about the last album, I noticed that there's a couple of instrumental songs with no vocal and stuff. And from where did that came from of releasing? Like, if I'm not mistaken, it's like three songs from from this album. No, there's no, well, there's no real instrumental album, but uh, there's uh, quite a few passages where there's. Not Same. much, not much vocals, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just uh, we don't really have a formula when we when we write a song. We just keep whatever sounds good, and then try and arrange it so it flows as as good as possible. And then uh, so whatever ends up as a song is that's what the song is gonna be. So. And um, from who came up the idea of doing a Deep Purple cover? <laughs> I came about like many years ago actually, because we uh, we were all really huge Purple fans, and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we talked about doing a Purple cover for at least ten years. And, um, so yeah, it just came natural this this time around, and uh, I think we did a really decent cover <laughs> of the song. And, uh, Really happy about how it how it turned out to be released now. Yeah, I mean it's on the on the Japanese uh, version, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but now I'm sure, of course, it's on the internet, so people who still hasn't heard it should look it up. Can reach it. Yeah, like I did. <laughs> and um, uh, from who came up the concept of uh, the last demo albums? Like, for example. You have um, a certain look in the Gateways video, mm -hmm. in the Demo Burger video, and who creates that, that the well, concept we, on the video? You know, we have uh, we were working with different people when it comes to, uh, to the clothing and, and stuff like that. So when we have an idea, we try and uh, try and find suitable people to work to work with, and um, the same was also um, in sort of. Uh, the Abuli album where we uh, worked with the same company in LA and uh, uh, for this album we wanted to do something more uh, uh, I don't know different than what we've done in the past especially in, the, in you know choosing white or grey is not really what you would expect a band like us would do you know so uh, it's very unexpected and uh, at the same time it really fits the whole overall feeling that we wanted to to convey with the, with the album. So like try not to be obvious or something? What? Do something that is not so obvious that... Yeah, obviously, that's, uh, that's uh, very obvious. <laughs> <laughs> and um, do you have any other projects besides the band? Like, not necessarily in music, but for example Rob Zombie made yeah, you know, like no, we didn't, we haven't uh, we haven't made any mu movies yet. <laughs> but, uh, we do have uh, we have all of us have other bands on the side. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, and music is pretty much uh, our life twenty four seven. And uh, yeah, it's, it feels great to be able to uh, to live off something that you don't really look at as a job. Even you know? uh, it's it's not even a job. So. We're really fortunate and lucky to be able to, uh, to travel the world, you know, and meet new people, uh, eat new food, lots of it, and uh, yeah. As a um, pro player in all the kind of band you play, do you have any special technique or something that you do before concert, before rehearsing or something? Like Not really. I mean, we probably should uh, practice more or we should uh, do this and that. But, you know, whatever uh, whatever floats your boat really is what to do. So I, I don't have any. I don't really warm up or anything. You know? I have to suffer for it when I get older, I suppose. <laughs> and um, that was some funny fact that had happened during those years with the band. Oh. <laughs> the funny facts should not be uh, published. published. <laughs> but um, no, we really. Uh, every time we're out touring, there's always something funny and memorable stuff happens, you know, it's, uh, so, yeah, 
Let's leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs>